Jane Freeman, and I'm about to teach you everything that I think I know about Boeing. I'm sure you know that you want the hairs on your bow, or just your bow itself, it's easier sometimes to focus on the hairs, um, parallel to the bridge. And we want that so that we can create clear, um, even tone, because if we have a bit of an angle, we're not going to get the same tone on each string, and we also might get some sideways sliding that we don't want. So the goal is for all the hairs to be flat on the string and for the bow to be parallel to the bridge. Um, a good way to get started is just doing the air, air bows, um, just to get the feeling of it. And you should look in the mirror, I find it's really helpful, and what you should be looking for one of the things you should be looking for is your shoulder and upper arm. How much is it moving? Because if we start doing this, swinging our arm from our shoulder, then we're going to get some undesirable bow sounds. Because um, the bow will be sweeping sideways across the string and going also going into where our fingerboard is, which we don't want because it will get all sticky and not sound as good either. So our shoulder is really not doing much of the bowing. Just at the very top here when you're close to the frog, your um, shoulder moves to bring your hand closer. But once it reaches, so you can think about it kind of in a, a square. You see how my arm is making a square? a right angle with my elbow. From there, if I just bow from a square to the straightest I can make my arm, um, my shoulder shouldn't move at all. So once I get past this square, my elbow comes in and then I form a triangle. You can see that. But there shouldn't be any of this going on. Okay, so that's super important. Um, the other thing is our wrist. If you notice, my wrist is bending as I go. You can think of it as the back of your hand leading up and your palm leading down. Now you can't see the bottom of my stroke. Um, but so, and I, I'm hitting the ceiling here so I can't go any higher, but you can see that there's some bend here to my wrist. Um, that's super important because you could be doing really well with your shoulder and not swinging back like this, but if, you're, if your wrist isn't flexible, then you're still going to be doing pretty much the same thing as if you were swinging. So the swinging might be more subtle, but look at the arc of the bow is still uh, not what we were looking for. So you really need to get your wrist involved. Um, there's some ways to think about this without your violin in your hands. Um, one way is just to get your wrist super loose. So like it's like a dead hand kind of. Um, and then rotate your arm so that you're in bowing position. So the back of your hand should be facing you. And then just use your arm to wiggle your dead hand. <laughs> And it should feel a little weird, but it should feel kind of good, too, because your hand's totally relaxed. You're basically just using a little bit of impulse from your arm. I could just hold on to this and push or push like that, and my, my hand will respond to the movement. Um, that's a neat way to think about it, too, of there's an impulse from your arm, and your hand just responds to it, and then you're just controlling that bounce in a way. Another way to think of it is if you've ever moved your hand through water, when you're pushing against the water, your wrist is going to bend if you're, if you're relaxed, right? And then as you push the other way, your hand will open. So you'll be pushing with your palm against the water, and then with the back of your hand against the water to create a nice, graceful flow. So your bow arm should be nice and relaxed and super flexible. 
If you can see, I'm also getting my fingers involved, kind of like a jellyfish. Um, so experiment with all these feelings. Imagine that you're just like a super amazing classical player um, and see how that might feel. Be just like overly dramatic with it until you can really feel your wrist doing what it should do, being flexible. Okay, that's my bit on flexible wrist and fingers. Um, oh, one more thing about that, um, or an exercise you might find helpful. Pay attention next time you write something down by hand to what your fingers are doing. Because they're doing all these little movements like this, right? And we don't even think about it anymore. Um, so your relationship to your bow, your fingers relationship to your bow is a little similar too. Like they're doing a lot of things like this, pushing and pulling, um, that eventually you won't even notice that it's doing, but super important, right? There's that like jellyfish move. So I can get, I can push, I can dig in, I can, right, throw it with just my fingers. I can get a lot of um, different tone qualities that way. Okay. Um, an exercise that you might find helpful if you find that you're one of these kind of shoulder swinging people, um, you can back up into your chair until your elbow is touching. You might have to rotate into the chair a little bit so that you get your arm at that 90 degree angle where you don't want your elbow to pass. And then as you bow, you're not going to um, be able to swing your elbow because the chair will get in the way. You'll whack the chair. Hopefully you won't whack your funny bone. Um, but that's a way to kind of get conscious about whether or not you're swinging. Um, you can do a similar thing with your forearm by putting it in a doorway. So against the door jam, you just lean your forearm and then you can um, just use you'll have you'll be forced to just use your wrist um, and you can try to play a tune that way right um, or even just do some rhythmic bowing like <laughs> right and it's not gonna sound maybe super awesome um, but you're gonna awaken some muscles and movements in your hand that you might not have known were possible. Okay, so now I want to get into some um, bowing exercises where we're actually bowing the strings. Um, the first one that I like to use is one where we're going from whole notes to half notes to quarter notes to eighth notes to sixteenth notes and then to thirty second and beyond. Um, so you're going to do four bars of whichever note you're on. So if you're starting with the whole notes, which you would be, you would count to four, four times, which would end up being four full bows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we move to half notes and it would be one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so I think you get the idea. You're just fitting whichever note uh, value you're using into four uh, bars of theoretical sheet music. So I'm going to give you an example of what this would sound like using just the A string. And I'm focusing the whole time on keeping my bow parallel to the bridge, my hairs on the string uh, as much as possible, as flat as possible, and I'm bending my wrist, I'm keeping my shoulder relaxed, all the things that I'm supposed to be thinking about. Um, and I'm keeping all those things happening as I get faster and avoiding tensing up. So you might find when you get to the eighth notes that you're going to want to, uh, and you don't want that. So keep relaxed. Um, if you find yourself tensing up, stop, shake it out, try it again. Um, really use all your mental powers 
to tell your body to relax and not tense up. So here's what this would sound like. So basically at the end, you're just, it's kind of a free-for-all. Just see how, how fast you can go and play around with the bounce on your bow and, and yeah, find new, new sounds and new feelings. Okay, so then to that we can add some patterns that we might typically find in fiddle music um, to get used to that. So a long short short is a good one, or run pony, however you want to think about it. Um, and that would be like this. So you're really emphasizing the one and the three. One, two, well, the one and the four. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's kind of, that. not kind of, that is a jig pattern. start slow but definitely um, push yourself to go faster um, if, if you feel comfortable going then just incrementally get faster and kind of the same as if you were training the range of your voice or something um, go until you feel your arm stiffen up and then scale back and be like, okay, relax, shake out your arm and try it again. And, and hopefully you'll just get, uh, farther and farther before your arm tenses up. Okay. So that would be a jig pattern. Um, a real pattern might be, that's a kind of a fun one. Um, especially if you're trying to back someone with some chords or something. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So it would sound like this. Again, make sure you keep getting faster. Um, what's another good one? So this would be a jig again. You can think one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so right about here is where I, I run out of ideas unless I add fingers. Um, so you can just do scales so it's not something that you have to think too hard about. But you could do... a jig and try a few different, um, you can do, um, long, short, short, I always end up mixing up the bowing, 
Um, I can never stick to the whole pattern the whole time, but that's fine. Um, um, as long as you're making it sound like a jig, you want those li light, lifty notes. <laughs> different things here. Those are all separate bows. That's uh, slurring three notes together there. come up with your own patterns think of a think of a reel that you know and try to translate it to a scale and you might find that you'll come up with something different than you would have otherwise um, and again uh, just like from our previous exercise is gonna do a lot for you um, before you start adding fingers in just and um, on that on the emphasis notes I'm digging in a little bit more I'm using my hand and my fingers to do that so if you put that crunch at the beginning of your bow then you're just emphasizing a little bit Partly by pushing the bow down to the to the hairs. So you're using your first finger with your thumb as sort of a fulcrum to push down. And you're not pushing down that hard when you're doing it, but that's the, that's the same motion. And I'm exaggerating, but. got something out of that that you didn't know before and you can add to your practice. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, um, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to add it into my next video. And stay tuned because the next video is going to be of a tune, a Nor Norwegian tune called Eppingen. I'm going to teach you the tune and then I'm going to teach you the bowings. Um, and show you how important they are to the way the sound the song sounds. All right, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.